This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000 year odyssey. And as you know, the cannabis uh, comes from the hemp plant. And that plant has been around, like I said, for 10,000 years. And so we have, we're journeying through those years of medicine and, and religion and the government and all of these different things that have been used, or hemp has been used for all of those years. And so today, we are coming up to Hawaii and the hemp project that the State Department of Agriculture has proposed. And we will meet two farmers who are growing hemp seeds on the Big Island. So it's a pleasure to talk to people firsthand, what do I call farmers, who have spent a lifetime being farmers, growing things, developing agriculture products. And that is Greg Smith and Steve Salaka. Sa Sakala. Sakala. Green Hawaii Genetics. So uh, Greg? Greg, can you hear yes, me? Yes. I can uh, hear you. Good. Tell us now, how long have you been a farmer? Oh, gee, it seems like the last 30 years I've been doing some form of farming, uh, mostly in California, and then farming here in Hawaii for the last 12 years. Um, I have an organic vegetable farm, on, and uh, I do a CSA, and I uh, do farmer's markets, and I run a farmer's market in Kona. So I've been involved with... Um, growing food as a farmer and as an advocate for most of my life. And so you were originally from California? Excuse me. Right. Why did you decide to come to Hawaii? Well, why not? I mean, it's a <laughs> beautiful place, fantastic place to grow food, and um, I just love the lifestyle. It's just a better place. I lived in San Diego, which was a really nice place, but it just got so crowded that Hawaii was the place to come, and of course the Kalu district is a pretty quiet area, so we, we love it down here. So you are in Kahu now? Yes. And so this farm that you have, the Green Hawaii Genetics, is that a, yes. new, is that a new farm? Or tell us about some of the other farms you, you have there in... Uh, well, well, Green Hawaii Genetics is... Uh, uh, has a contract with the Department of Agriculture to develop hemp seed for the state. Uh, we're one of three um, farms uh, in Hawaii that is involved with the, the seed development, uh, which is what we need to have happen before we can start giving permits to farmers to grow hemp in Hawaii. So we're working on the genetics and we're working on the strains that have been given to us by the Department of Agriculture to make sure they stay within the guidelines and um, looking to um, do the research to find out what is the best varietals that will do well here in Hawaii. And then we will be giving them to people who will be applying for the, for the contracts to uh, grow hemp in Hawaii. Now, with seed development, I, I'm not a farmer, so you have to tell me what it means being a seed developer. What, what, what happens? How do, you, how do you develop a seed? Well, you start with different varietals that come from different places. We have seed from China and we have seed from, from different areas. And um, we cross them with other genetics and we try to get certain um, characteristics. Um, there are growing seed for fiber, you grow seed for seed material for protein, and you grow seed for medicine. And um, so there's different types of hemp um, genetics that are for specific growing needs. 
And so that's what we're working on is to find the best one for Hawaii. And nobody's ever grown hemp here, really, so this is all brand new. So you have to develop the seed that for the climate. And yeah. is that what you're telling me? Yeah. And the soil. Right. Where you and, we, uh, we and have that, volcanic the, soil, uh, so China doesn't have volcanic soil. So Hi, Marcia, this is this is this is Steve Sakala. Um, so part part of what the Department of Agriculture is asking us to do is because we're at a unique latitude, uh, a tropical latitude, many of the hemp varieties have not been grown or tested over time at this latitude, and so. It's mainly to see if the seeds acclimatize to Hawaii and remain uh, under the legal limit of certain cannabinoids, mainly THC. Yeah. So, but on the Big Island, the climate is different than Molokai. So, correct. Are you growing for each island, or what? How does that work? Well, you know, hemp is an extremely versatile and hardy plant. Uh, it was found on every major continent. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of diversity potential with hemp. Uh, it, we're basically operating under the assumption that if it does well in Kau, we are testing it in a, in a few other spots. And of course, the other contractors are on other islands. There's one of the contractors at the University of Hawaii in Oahu. There's a contractor over in Maui. So these, these seeds are being tested in different environments, and we'll be looking at and, and comparing what the results are, but we're anticipating them to, to be very similar. Now, so, okay, let's assume that the seed works well, and you're planting, of course. How long does it take to go from a good, healthy seed uh, to a, a harvest, from seed to harvest? How long is that? Well, that, that depends. Um, it depends on the time of year, it depends on the day length. Um, we do some light manipulation to get plants to a certain size, but um, let's say in a normal growing season, if you were planting your hemp in the spring, you would harvest in the fall sometime. And so you're looking at a seven or eight month cycle. Um, and that's using natural lighting. But uh, we, because we're manipulating lighting, we can pull. Um, a healthy harvest off in as little as, um, you know, two and a half, three months. Wow. So that means that you could have, if you were in business, you could have two, at least two harvests a year. Uh, yeah, we're looking at more like three harvests. Three a harvests a year. Do you have to rotate the crop or like you do in some vegetables or just leave it in hemp? Well, you know, one of the things that Greg and I really uh, see eye to eye on is we believe in sustainable organic agriculture as, as a foundational practice. So like any crop, you're not going to want to continue to plant hemp in the same space without regenerating the land. So our approach is to use organic fertilizers, to use crop rotation, to use cover crops, just like we would um, in, in our food crops. So, so you... um, it's, it's really a point that we want to bring across when we talk about hemp is we're not here to just use another plant to extract the minerals of the soil, but we're here to grow a plant that brings the community up and, uh, you know, has economic potential, but also really can, um, you know, create an agriculture system that's sustainable over the long term. Yep. So you're treating this like any other food product that you're growing? In, in that way, yes. yes. Obviously, the growing conditions and some of its needs are different than, than food crops, but um, as far as our, our practices, our agriculture that's, practices, very yep. similar. That's where I was going with that, your, your, the practice, yeah. the love with which you treat this plant. That, that's right. Yeah. Now, once it's, we've, it reaches maturity and you, it's ready for harvest, what happens then? What, what, what goes on with the harvest? Well, first of all, you have to test it. So you have to stay within the guidelines, and there's a certain... Um, stage within the growing cycle that you test the plant at, and if you stay under the 0.3%, then it will be accepted by the Department of Agriculture as a industrial hemp, and then it's sort of up to the industry to decide what they want to do with it. So if somebody wants to create uh, hempcrete, then they can create hempcrete. If they want to create a seed crop to feed animals, they could do that. If they want to 
regenerate the soil, they can do that. Or if they want to create uh, medicine, they can do that. So it's all kind of up to the individual grower as to what direction they want to take with it. But they just need to stay within the guidelines that the state puts in front of us, which is basically staying under the 0.3% THC. That's pretty much the national standard okay, for so, hemp. So that gets it out of that section yeah. A or whatever the right the cannabis and what we're trying what we're trying to do is give stable seeds to the Department of Agriculture so that when a farmer goes to grow it they know that they're going to be able to stay within those guidelines and it's not easy because the seed um, has a lot of variables so it's it's not easy to get a stable seed but that's what we're working for and that's what we hope we can do for the Department of Agriculture so you are growing various seeds to see which one actually stays within the guidelines that produces a healthy crop that the state right. then can issue to whoever has a license. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. We're not only just testing, but we're also developing, which was, I, I think, Greg's point a little bit earlier in the conversation. So, um, you know, the, the state has purchased some seeds that we're testing for acclimatization. But at the same time and concurrently, we're also developing our own seed varieties that um, we know that we can actually adjust cannabinoid levels at by hybriding. And so um, those things are happening concurrently on the farm and with the company. This, this is really exciting. Tell us, now you mentioned um, Hemp Creek. What is Hemp Creek? So, so Hemp Creek is a building material that is essentially just hemp fiber and lye. Um, and so it's a non-toxic uh, building material, fairly lightweight, uh, no bug problems. And so it's becoming a very popular building material. And we think it has great potential in Hawaii. There's definitely a lot of folks interested in the hemp creek here, uh, obviously because we have such high costs on our building materials. So um, that's what some of the folks that are interested in producing hemp, it, in, in some ways it could be a byproduct of other hemp products, such as if you're growing a seed crop for either animal feed or protein um, food or hemp seed oil, you can use then the fiber in a dual crop type of varietal for both like a hempcrete and a seed crop. So, so you take the oil out and make um, CBD, I guess, I don't know. And then you take well, the fiber and you make a building material out of it. Well, there's, there's, there's different products that are being called hemp oil. So we just want to clarify for your listeners. Okay. There's the hemp oil that gets pressed from the seed. And that is the seed, that's the oil that you've been able to buy in the grocery store since the late 90s. That's essentially a, a dietary, um, a food substance. So the oil that comes from the seed has no cannabinoid or very little cannabinoids in it, like CBD. That other type of hemp oil gets extracted from the flowers, the plant material, and that comes from trichome production. And that's what we would consider a medical grade industrial hemp. And that's the uh, oil that you could then use for CBDs or CBG or some of the other cannabinoids that um, we're interested in. Yeah. So um, the oil that that comes from this could be used for like soy milk. You could use hemp milk and things like Ab that. Absolutely, absolutely. You're, you're already seeing hemp milk on the, sh on the shelves. Um, you know, it's used uh, as a oil, let's say in salad dressing, similar to flax. Uh, you know, hemp seed is being used for so much right now, but um, certainly the oil is uh, uh, going to be a very popular item in, in the future and uh, as it has been. We need to take a break. We'll be back in just a minute. And then I want to talk about CBDs and and what what is a CBD okay we'll be right back sure this is Think Tech Hawaii raising public awareness
Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha, and I'm Marcia Joyner with Cannabis Chronicles, and we are talking to my two, two new best friends, Greg Smith and Steve Salak at Green Hawaii Genetics on the Big Island. And it's time that we all in the state talked about hemp. Hemp has the potential as an industry, if we but look at it, hemp has a the potential to give us a whole new industry so that we're not so dependent on tourism and the military. And so I am talking today to, on the phone, to two farmers who are really at the core of developing the right seeds that can take us into a whole new world. And those are seeds for growing hemp. Now, hemp has been around for 10,000 years and it grows everywhere, but the state and these farmers are working at giving us a plant that is hardy and healthy and will grow all over the state of Hawaii and that give growth and development to a new way of life, a whole new industry. And so I am absolutely delighted to talk to Greg Smith and Steve Salak. And welcome back, gentlemen. I am so glad to Thank know you. Thank you. So tell us, Thanks, Marcia. tell us a little bit about the opportunities of making this into a whole new world for Hawaii. Or am I dreaming? Hmm. Yeah, well, we are really excited that this could really stimulate agriculture here in Hawaii. Um, the economical opportunities are vast. It's, it's probably one of the fastest growing industries. Of course, the cannabis industry is growing in all kinds of directions, but the, the CBD um, hemp industry is exploding on the mainland, and we're looking forward to seeing it have an opportunity to grow here in Hawaii. Uh, we're pretty lucky to have the, the head of the Department of Agriculture supporting this opportunity for the state. Um, Scott Enright has been a very uh, important part of why we're able to get to where we are today, and he has supported this opportunity to bring hemp to Hawaii. And um, it's been a slow process. We've had a lot of you know ups and downs trying to get through legislation and through bills getting passed, and we've been sort of working on this for over three years with with the Department of Ag. But we're very close to seeing permits being given out by hopefully um, March or no later than April. And uh, that's extremely exciting to know that there will be farmers that will be able to start growing hemp in Hawaii for different reasons. And um, uh, it's, it's, it's the beginning of something very big for the state, uh, a whole, whole opportunity for pro uh, processing all types of uh, products and um, we know people on the mainland are making very large amount of money growing the CBD hemp, and so it has the potential of really helping small-scale agriculture. Uh, a one-acre farm in, in Oregon produces as much as $100,000 an acre. Wow. So um, that's pretty amazing. Well, I don't that, know if it's going to stay that way, but right now it's, uh, it's really booming. Well, yeah. in the... On the Department of Agriculture's uh, webpage, it says if you're going to get the license, you need 10 acres of farmland. A hundred thousand dollars. That's the minimum. That's the minimum. I'm saying, and a hundred thousand dollars well, an acre. <gasps> oh, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> Hi, Marcia. This is this is Steve Pacala. Um The way that we understand the application process is that. You won't have to have 10 acres, but there will, you can grow up to 10 acres under this initial permit. Um, 
so, you know, even if you don't have 10 acres, I think there's still the a possibility of getting one of these permits, but you won't be able to do more than 10 acres for the first year. Um, and we imagine that will, that will grow, okay. first two years. So if I buy a license or apply for the license, then I can say to my friend who is a farmer, can we use your land to grow hemp? Could that, can, can you come together as a sure, sure, sure. Like like any corporation, you can create um, you know uh, partnerships, LLCs, or other types of you know corporate uh, uh, contracts to partner. There's no reason why the person who you know wants to apply for the permit has to have the land, but you do need to know where that land is going to be before you apply for the permit oh, because of part course. of the permit yeah. process requires I mean, but, lots but of But you can stuff. come together as a like you said an LLC, some kind of a partnership sure too. of course yeah okay next step now if and if you go on the uh, farm uh, the website for the department of agriculture there are some rules as to how you can apply what it costs um, um what the specific things you have to do to be able to get a license and um so i would tell anybody out there that if they're really interested, they should go to the Department of Agriculture website and just put in hemp. And on the very bottom of that page that tells you about the guidelines, there is a, um, an access that you can go to and it will give you the rules of what the application is going to be uh, about. It won't be the application, but it will give you the basic idea of what the rules are. Yeah. That will... We, okay. Go ahead. We anticipate for the first year that there will be limited amount of permits, but we're we're encouraging more and more anybody that's interested in applying because I think that will demonstrate to the Department of Agriculture that in very short order they're going to need to increase the um, amount of permits so that um, the average farmer will have access. But it, it looks like maybe the first round will only have about 10 or 15 permits available. I, I think this is wonderful. I meant looking at the big picture, of course, since I'm not a farmer. But looking at the big picture, places like uh, Molokai, who they need industry desperately, places like Absolutely. that 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 can use, can benefit from this industry, it is just so exciting. Next step, to go from, okay, let's assume that I have 10 acres and it's ready for harvest. How do I process the hemp into the next step to, let's assume biofuels. I, I know nothing about biofuels, but. Yeah, that's, that you picked an interesting example. Um, if you were growing hemp for biofuels, I would imagine you would already have a plan in place to, uh, to send your hemp. Uh, we know that the Pacific Biodiesel over in Maui is definitely interested in growing hemp for their biofuels operation. So, you would have uh, some type of a strategic partnership with a comp corporation that's ready to process your um, your hemp. Mm -hmm. and, and I would say that in general, for any end product that you're looking at making from hemp, don't necessarily wait till you're growing hemp to decide then where it's going to go. You're going to want to know what type of hemp you're growing, depending on what your end product is that you desire, whether it's fiber, seed, or cannabinoids um, for medicinal use. Uh, you know, I know the product I want. Because this is in a very new sta beginning stage of the building of the infrastructure to develop this industry uh, hasn't even begun yet. So it's going to take some real financing and some real um, strategic partnerships. Yes, strategic yeah. partnerships to start this industry because it's not uh, the process of processing him um, is. Um, a bit complicated and can be quite expensive, so you, you really need to create a partnership. But once we get the plant growing, I think that's just all going to start taking place and investors will come in and be a part of it here in Hawaii. Well, now, of course, I'll tell you the one I think where we can make a killing. Well, there's two products. <laughs> <laughs> two products. Number one, a hemp is, can replace copper tone for suntan because we got to get rid of copper tone. Now, and it's been proven that it works to protect the skin from suntan. That's number one. And number two is the fuel 
or oil or whatever it's called, fluid for the 3D printer. Now, that's, that one has to, we got to have a corner on that. <laughs> so, so tell me about uh, the CBD because that is the thing that everybody talks about, every store has, everybody's got a CBD line. Tell me exactly what is CBD and how it works. Sure. Well, CBD is the acronym for cannabidiol, and cannabidiol is the non-psychoactive cannabinoid that is responsible for a majority of the health benefits of the cannabis plant. So for many years, that everybody assumed THC was what um, people wanted to you know, equate the medicinal effects to, but um, science and time has shown us that CBD is the primary healthy cannabinoid um, related to, you know, reduction in inflammation, uh, antispasmodic, you know, anti-carcinogenic, and the list goes on and on. It's quite an extensive list of health benefits. Essentially, CBD helps regulate the endocannabinoid system, which is found in all mammal bodies. And that endocannabinoid system is a re recent discovery in Western science, uh, just discovered in the late 80s and still being understood in its totality. Uh, but what they do know is it's responsible for the homeostasis of the human body, so the balance of the human body. So when someone um, starts using CBD or some of these other uh, cannabinoid whole, you know, whole spectrum extracts, their endocannabinoid system basically um, comes closer to balance and they feel better, whether it's you know, reduction of, um, you know, cholesterol or insulin production regulation, whatever it is, better sleep. Okay. Anxiety is a major one we see benefits from. So um, it, it's really an amazing thing that's um, helping a lot of people with a lot of different health issues. I am impressed, thoroughly impressed. Every, every store, every place, somebody says they have CBD. And well, so is there, how do you know this? what is is real CBD or somebody that's just put a label on something? How do we know? Yeah, that's exactly what I was about to make a point on. There's, um, there's a lot of folks rushing to market because there's obviously the industry is growing so rapidly. So one of the things that Greg and I um, really like to educate and advocate for is to make sure that you know where your CBDs are coming from. Um, it's really great to feel like we have access to these products now and a lot of people are just excited that they're on the shelves. But really now it's up to the consumer to do their homework, just like they would on any other product or industry. Is it organically grown? That, that's really the main question when it comes to cannabis. Uh, having been in the cannabis industry for over 20 years, uh, I, it's unfortunate to have to say, but a majority of the industry is not organic, which means they're using chemicals, uh, synthetic fertilizers, uh, high levels of pesticides and fungicides. And um, if, there, if you're source of your cannabis and hemp is not organic, uh, it's quite likely that you're consuming something that you might not like to be consuming, especially if your you know, immune system is compromised or you have health issues. You really want to make sure you can get as close to the source of your product as possible. Um, know your farmer, know your food. It's the same thing with, um, with cannabis. And, so, um, and you want to make sure that the other ingredients that they're combining the CBD into is also high-level, high-quality ingredients. Um, we're, we're not big fans of the isolate that's being used in a lot of the products. Uh, CBD isolate is advertised as 99.9% .9 pure, um, but it's not as, uh, in our opinion, it's not as healthy of, uh, of as a product as a whole spectrum extract, which has other cannabinoids, brings the entourage effect, and is a, a less industrial uh, process to get it processed. Um, the isolate is quite an industrial process. Uh. Is that on the label? How can I tell? Or do I have to call you and say, send me some? <laughs> <laughs> well, you certainly can visit our, our Mono Artists and Botanics website um, to, to look at the products that we're offering because um, we have taken care to, to really look at each ingredient that we include, and we use only whole-spectrum organic uh, extract. But it should say on the label if it's from isolate or whole-spectrum um, extract. You're looking for something that um, is not from isolate, if it says CO2 extracted or distillate, um, then you, you're looking at something that's more wide spectrum. But you want to, in our opinion, the isolate isn't as, isn't as healthy. If it says isolate, it's not as healthy as a full spectrum? It, it, this is just what the data and the science is showing, that the entourage effect when other cannabinoids are, are in their natural form in relationship to each other, you have a better health 
um, potential as far as an outcome if you're using these cannabinoids. When you're only using one CBD, then you don't, you're not getting that total interaction, which they call the um, entourage effect. So that's why we're advocates for whole, whole spectrum um, extract. So now tell us again your, uh, the name of your company that makes uh, CBD. Sure. Well, so the company that um, I have is called Mana Artisan Botanics, uh, and our website's manabotanics.com. Manabotanics.com. Thank you, gentlemen. This has been a real pleasure. And as the crop goes on, we will talk more. <laughs>